Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Bob McGoy. I'll be your host for this afternoon. I'll be running the chat. I'm with Miss Judy Marlowe, who is our presenter today out of St. Louis office. I'm going to turn it over to Judy. Uh, she's got some good information to share with you about working with mesh data and some tips and tricks. Thank you. Hi, everybody, and welcome. For the next 30 minutes, this little mini cast, we're going to discuss different tools and options that are available in SOLIDWORKS when working with different forms of mesh data. We have a very short time, so I want to introduce you to a few different options and ways that we can manipulate mesh data in whatever form that you care to work with. There are a variety of tools available to us. This is my agenda. Uh, what I want to go through is import options. We have many different ways to import data to get the mesh form that we want to work with. I'm going to do a very short overview of the scan to 3D, and then I'm going to get into the surface from mesh, the convert mesh bodies, and then a really awesome new command, if you haven't seen it in 2019, is called the slicing command. Each of the three mesh tools that I'm going to go through, you'll notice that many of them manipulate the same mesh imports, whether STL files, OBJ, off PLY, PL2, and even 3MF files. Now from surface to mesh and convert mesh bodies, we can import as graphic bodies. Now the scan to 3D version, you have all of the same files. You also can import as graphic bodies, but it has one additional import option, and that is for a point cloud and the 3DS files. And then we have the slicing command. Now starting off, we have differences between mesh bodies and there's what we call a BREP mesh body. So the mesh body, such as like our STL, um, it has triangular polygons or, or facets. They're flat, and this is its topology. Each facet you have has three vertices and three edges which would they have also been referred to as fins. The mesh B rep, which is a boundary representation, this is a facet of meshes that are collected onto faces. So its topology is geometric shapes, like a planar surface or a cylinder, NURBS, and that kind of format. So import options. I think this is really important to understand where they are. It looks like um, it's supposed to be down at the very bottom. I must have moved that. Um, under tool system options, um, import and export. We're going to deal with import during this presentation. Um, you can also use at the top menu bar, that little sprocket is also the option. Now this has been available, the import and exports were um, actually started in 2017. They were added to the system options. For those of you who are working with SOLIDWORKS 2016 or earlier, you have the same options, the same export and import options, but you get to them a little bit differently. The, you would go through the SOLIDWORKS open menu, and then when you change the file type from all types to mesh files, you will see an options box appear. So you get to it a little different, but you do have the same exact options. When we import our mesh data under the import, we'll see that we have different file formats. We have the um, one area where we can drop down and pick out the STLs, object, off, ply, PLY2. There's also then another Y3MF file format has its own drop down box. Regardless of which drop-down box for the file format, you will still be able to import as solid bodies, surface bodies, or graphic bodies. When you import as a surface or solid body, you will have mesh body options that will also be available. Otherwise, they're grayed out, you can see, with just the graphics body option. By default, um, when you load SOLIDWORKS, it's on graphics body by default, so you would have to change it. The nice thing about SOLIDWORKS um, putting it in their system options is if there's a certain way you want to open your files every single time, once you set them in your system options, they're set under your user profile. I'm going to give you the brief overview of scan 
to 3D. Now this is a SOLIDWORKS premium add-in, so it does have to be turned on. Not only does scan to 3D do the same mesh file types, um, it also has some additional file types. You'll see the 3DS or point clouds. Regular mesh files and, and 3D manufacturing formats do not include um, any point cloud features. The scan to 3D option offers a variety of manual and automatic ways to edit your mesh data. So the mesh data can be done semi-manual by the mesh edit command, and then there's also a variety of wizards. What I'm going to do is just give you a quick view of what a mesh wizard would look like with a point cloud. Most often when you use um, scanning software and you have a point cloud, usually those softwares have their own program to manipulate mesh. And as you can see here in the feature tree, we have a point cloud, and it's just a bunch of dots that have XYZ coordinates. In tools, we'll go to scan to 3D, and we'll do the mesh prep wizard. It's a pretty easy process guiding you through. We pick out our point cloud. We can also orient it differently or leave it as we brought it in. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as it was. Next, we can get rid of any noise, noise in between any of the points. It's a simple slider to make your file larger or smaller, um, changing your results in your graphic area. This is a, a little handle that was scanned holding that part together. So at this point, you can get rid of anything else that you don't want to use. We can also use a slider um, to simplify our files and also change our point cloud size if we choose to. I just wanted to give you an overview of Scanda 3D so that you know it's an option that's available. Again, it's only for premium users. As this is going through constructing mesh, this is probably about a, I don't know, a 30 second or so um, construction. What it's doing is it's literally connecting all the dots and creating topology that's going to give us a mesh body. I could have gotten rid of the other side there, but just for keeping this a little bit simple, I just left that other side available. As we're coming to the end of our construction, what's going to happen is we're going to see as it moves quickly, we're going to go ahead and see that this is going to take all of those points, it's going to join them all together, and we'll see that we have an actual mesh body. Okay. The next wizard will go through the next page. We can smooth it out if we choose to. And this page, we, can hold, we have holes to fill. In this case, we've got three holes in our model. And if you remove them from this box, they won't be filled in. If you go next, it'll fill it in for you. And this is where I'm going to stop. Um, we can then launch another surface wizard uh, if you want to make surfaces out of this mesh. But I just wanted to give you an overall idea of how you can take point clouds and make a mesh body inside of SOLIDWORKS. It kind of went in the middle first. So scan to 3D, again, um, a premium add-in. Next thing we're going to do is go over surface from mesh and convert mesh bodies. Now, I want to open this STL file in three different ways, okay? Um, a graphic body. I'm going to open it up as a graphic first. These are just pictures. There's no topology, there's no sectioning, but in new enhancements are available in SOLIDWORKS 2018 where you are able to apply texture and appearance to mesh files that you import as a graphic body. Now, imported graphic bodies are visible when you use your HLR, HLV, or wireframe modes. That's hidden lines removed and hidden lines visible. You can also render imported graphic bodies along with solid and surface bodies. And the other thing is imported graphic bodies can appear behind other geometry. Previously, they were always appeared in the foreground, even if other geometry um, should have been displayed in the front of a graphics body. So I want to show you just a little bit about opening up a graphic body. We're going to open up a file. Again, I want to go through Change to Mesh Files, and you'll notice the option is available. 
Okay, we're opening up just a standard little STL file. Again, by default, it's a graphic body. It's just that simple. You'll notice we have a few new icons to, to deal with. Um, you'll also see your feature tree has a graphic body folder, so that shows you it's not a surface or solid. And then you'll also see the graphic icon. Things I want you to notice so that you know what you're working in. Now, if you prefer to work with a surfacing body, then um, we have a new icon, and we'll go ahead and pick the surface body option. We'll go through the same process. I'm going to open up the same file, and it's going to be another, the same STL mesh file for our arm. We are going to change our option this time. We're going to take surface, and then you can see that we have the mesh body option to create mesh bodies and also group facets into faces. Again, pretty fast. This little part here is now an imported surface body. Again, a section view would show that all of our surfaces are zero thickness. It's a mesh surface. And last but not least, I'm going to show you to open up the last option, the solid body option. Now, there's a tip I want to give you. In SOLIDWORKS, you can import and create multiple solid bodies from a mesh file, but this provides that the mesh is closed. So if you pick the solid body option and your mesh comes in as a surface body, even though you didn't pick it as a surface, bodies that cannot be imported as solids will come in as surfaces. So just be aware of that in case you know that you imported it and picked the solid body option and it didn't come in that way. SOLIDWORKS is not broken. It's doing what it's meant to do. Picking the same mesh file with our STL, changing our option to solid, and just like that, we'll open it and now we actually have a solid mesh. Notice the new icon. Solid imported body, but it shows the mesh. Again, a section view would show that this is solid. So far, so good? All right. Now, new to 2018, the Surface from Mesh tool um, allows you to manipulate mesh data in a variety of formats from other sources, again, including STLs, OBJs, and manufacturing files. The Surface from Mesh tool lets you quickly select faces from the mesh data and then turn them into surfaces allowing you to use all the capabilities that you expect from SOLIDWORKS geometry. You can also turn mesh data into a different mesh type. Like solid bodies, you can apply materials, you can retrieve accurate mass properties, and add SOLIDWORKS features and geometries to this file. You can also convert traditional solid bodies to mesh bodies, allowing you to perform common tasks like Boolean operations to further manipulate your mesh geometry. And like any other part, mesh data can also be added directly to assemblies and made it into position. So they're just like any other component, meaning you can use your mesh data with all of your SOLIDWORKS design. The property manager for Surface from Mesh is a pretty simple format to navigate. The Surface from Mesh tool works best on mesh surfaces with regular prismatic geometry like planes, spheres, cylinders, cones. The tool may not be appropriate for highly irregular meshes, such as something created from a 3D scan of an organic shape. Because this feature creates surfaces, the recommended workflow is then to trim the surfaces to form to a solid. So first, what we'll do is we'll look at different facet types. Again, um, we'll selection box is available so we can select individual facets one by one. It also allows you the paint and with the paint option, this little box on the right will appear, and it's a slider allowing you to select the size of your little paint selector tip. And you'll see what that looks like in just a minute. We also have two other options, the facet tolerant slider. That slider is to include fewer meshes in the surfaces that you're creating. You can move the slider to the left. That will loosen the tolerance for the fast facets while moving the slider to the right will tighten the tolerance. So if you're t attempting to create a plane and you've got three facets, one of which is at a slight angle to the other two, 
If you loosen the tolerance, it'll include the angled facet in a plane, while a tight tolerance might exclude it. And then last but not least, extend surface size. Now this will extend the surface beyond the triangular edges to eliminate you having to maybe use extend surface later in your design. Again, this is all if needed. So let's check it out. I'm using an imported surface for this, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to open up surface from mesh. You can see if you're not sure what each of these icons are, I'll give you a little brief explanation. And what we're going to do is on the front face here, I want to make planar surface out of all of these little facets. So again, you can pick them individually, or we can use the painter. And the painter, you'll look and see my cursor is going to show a little dot. That little dot is because I changed my painter size and pulled it over so it'll get a smaller area or a larger area. I can go through, zoom in and out. I can move over. You'll see a few of the slight small um, facets I didn't get on the one side but I did on the other, and I'm just going to continue on grabbing that whole surface. Almost done. And we're good to go. There's my little slider tab. I can calculate. You'll see all my little facets are now, once I hit it OK, you'll see that this is going to create for us now an actual surface out of everything that I just painted. Now, if you selected a face you did not want, here's a tip. Click Alt and the left mouse button, drag the pointer over the faces you don't want to remove them. Okay? So there is my surface from mesh. I hid my graphic body. And you'll see now I can utilize this surface as I need to. You can simply turn the graphic body on and import more surfaces if you choose to, and then later on use your surfacing talent and go ahead and create a solid body from all the surfaces. Again, it all depends on what your purpose is and what portions of a, um, a, a body you would like to use. To convert mesh bodies, kind of converts mesh body, bodies to a solid body automatically. When you're working with mesh data, it's similar to how you work with SOLIDWORKS geometry and tools. You'll be able to create section views, trim surfaces, get your mass properties. Now you can, um, on BREP bodies, not graphic bodies, you can create reference planes. So again, be aware of that. If you have a graphic body, you won't be able to create a plane, because technically there's nothing there. It's just a picture. You can also take these BREP bodies and, and do shelling and offset. And again, detect interference and apply color as well. Any Boolean operations, like combine or intersect or split, um, you must have a solid volume in order to utilize those. Here are some standard convert mesh body workflows. Importing a mesh file from a 3D scanner, or it can be from another modeling software or another CAD product, and you convert it to a, a mesh BREP body. You can also import and convert graphic mesh bodies and you can also select a standard B rep body or a graphics closed or open body and convert it to a mesh. It all depends on what kind of file you want to work with in your modeling process. So let's take a look. In this file, I've got a standard um, convert to mesh. And if anyone's had any of our essentials class, this will look familiar to you. I have a file that I opened up as just a surface. You can see all the facets. I'm going to use Convert Mesh to Bodies. I'm going to pick the body itself. I can keep or hide the original body, and you can also change your mesh refinements if you choose to. This command also allows you some advanced mesh refinements if you want to get down for maximum deviations um, for your distance and your angles. Again, sliders as well. When you click OK, just like that, we have a new body that was converted. This, I had a surface body, so it's a surface body as well. And because I chose to keep the original surface import, it's keeping both of those bodies so you can hide or show. At that point now, I could take this 
command and use my surface from mesh and calcu calculate out any of the surfaces that I want. And I'll go ahead and hide this, uh, my converted body. And we can see that I can just then use my surface from mesh. Okay? They're all used interactively. So that gives us our third item, which is the slicing command. This is absolutely so cool. So if you've been to any of the events that we've had for the What's New in 2019, you might have seen this model before. The slicing command has some new enhancement opportunities for those who work with mesh data. What I have here is I'm going to open up a 3MF file. Again, this is a 3D manufacturing format similar to an STL file. It's got its own dropdown, 3D manufacturing format. And as I choose this file, again, this is like an STL, but it includes information about materials and colors, information that aren't in an STL. The new slicing command. What it does is we're allowed to pick a plane, and I'm going to pick a top plane. And parallel from that, I can choose how many planes that I want to slice through my mesh model and at what distance. Now, there's a lot of options. Slicing planes and sketches can be put in a folder in your feature tree. I want to show you the intersection and slice called exact. Again, another SOLIDWORKS checkbox. If you use the exact option, you're going to get an exact sketch. What it does is it's going to show you every little, at every slice, it's going to show you every little section, every line that was a part of the faceted part itself. Okay? So when you use that exact checkbox, be aware that that's what you're going to get. Okay? Now, I'm going to open this up one more time, and we're going to remove the checkbox for exact. And when we take the slicing command on the same model, and same plane, top plane, we'll do the same slices. And you'll see also, if we take off exact, there's also circular and rectangular. And I'll show you those in a moment. What you will have then is just splines. As I hide my surface imported body, you'll notice that now we have splines. Now, each of those planes and sketches can be moved. And you ask, what do we do with that? We can then take each of these and create a loft out of each of those sections. Pretty cool, huh? You'll notice here, each section I can make a loft. And now I can use a lofted body in order to um, manipulate and make this. It's a handle, a gaming handle. So we can go ahead and manipulate that. We can split it in half um, and create any other parts and surfaces that we want. If you chose the circle command, it will show you the circles like you see here, and the rectangular will cut through that part. And it takes, think of a bounding box. It's going to take the outer uh, limits of where you sliced through, and it gives you the rectangular or circular sketches. Again, each sketch on a separate plane that can be manipulated. So today we went through the surface from mesh. We went to convert, looked at convert mesh. We looked into the scan to 3D, and then also the new slicing command. I know we just touched the surface, but thank you very much for joining me today. Well, thank you very much, Judy, for, for that information. There's a lot of good info in there. If, if you haven't had a chance to look through the What's New document for what we do with meshing in 2018 and 2019, I strongly suggest you get a hold of those What's New documents and check out the help. There's some good information in there. Except for that, I'd like to thank everybody for attending the webcast. Um, we've got more of these going on this week. This is week three of four, so we're on track to have 40 presentations in about 20 days here. So we've got a lot of good content remaining for you. Feel free to go to www.cati.com and sign up for the rest of the presentation. So thank you very much. So everybody, have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.